Hey everybody! Oh, <laughs> in my Hunswijk, and today I'm coming to you with a Halloween look, special effects Halloween look. No worries, you don't have to be a certified uh, special effects artist to get these types of prosthetics. But anyway, I digress. The wig very easily. Um, yeah, I did not paint my arms. <laughs> but the wig uh, is actually a, a wig I've worn before. It was really full and beautiful, but I tweezed a huge middle part. I gave it a different color. I thinned it out like crazy. You guys have no idea. And uh, that's what I used for my, yeah, well, weird orcish beggar lady. <laughs> So for the hood that I'm wearing, I got this actually from fantasy shop Fairyland, <laughs> www.fairyland.nl. This is a Dutch um, kind of LARP shop, if I had to say it. Well, they, they sell uh, lots of products related to LARPing, Wicca, um, you know, you get the idea, kind of cosplay. And then for my lenses, I am wearing aqua lenses from color view. All the correct names will be below in the information box just so you guys know. So yeah, I'm sorry for the long intro but I just had to give you guys some more information on what is going on here. Um, so yeah, if you want to know how I did this special effects orc beggar lady, then you know what you gotta do. Bye! So before I started fitting the prosthetic, I made sure that my face was oil free. Uh, this is a prosthetic from RBFX. This is a foam latex prosthetic in a orc type of style. So I will be sticking this prosthetic down with Telesis 7 silicone adhesive. This is perfect for foam latex pieces and for silicone prosthetics. Um, I will be gluing it down with a... Uh, Delium Tools uh, special effects brush designed by Thomas Supernaut. And first I'm going to apply a little bit at the time of that glue on my nose because I want to have the prosthetic centered first and then I can glue everything else, um, you know, onto my face. So I started out with my nose and then uh, my top lip and a little bit on my nose bridge. So basically I want to center the prosthetic first. And just so you know, don't use too much of this glue because it's it's really powerful. Let me put it like that. So I'm first aligning the nose. And once I feel that the nose is in place, I'm gonna softly press it down onto my face where I applied uh, the prosthetic adhesive. And just really take your time with this, with placing the prosthetic. Make sure that everything is, uh, is aligned perfectly with your face. So now I'm gonna move on. I'm pushing back uh, the, the top part of the prosthetic and I'm applying some of that Telesis again. The beautiful thing about Telesis is that once you've applied it and you press the prosthetic against it, you can still move the prosthetic around a little bit. But once the prosthetic adhesive has dried, um, yeah, it will stick down immediately. So please be careful not to rip your prosthetic once you uh, are gonna stick it down. So what I just did is uh, use some of that Telesis to glue my brow down. No worries, when you take it off, you're not going to rip out your brow hairs as long as you do it the correct way. So yeah, um, it's really easy. Just apply a little bit of the prosthetic adhesive and then press down on the prosthetic and make sure that everything is in place. Okay, so I already glued down one side of the prosthetic and now I'm going to show you guys the other side of the prosthetic. So yeah, it's the same principle. I'm just gonna glue down my eyebrow and then I'm gonna apply some more prosthetic adhesive on the area where I know I'm gonna apply the prosthetic onto. And I'm not gonna glue down the edges just yet. I'm gonna save that bit for last. It's actually really easy. Um, simply said, everywhere where the prosthetic is gonna be, there needs to be glue underneath it, you know, just so you get what I mean. So now I'm going to place the prosthetic um, right on the area where my crease would be. So actually, like I said before, I'm aligning the prosthetic with my face shape as best as I can. And when you do this, really take your time with this because it can mess up your look if the prosthetic is not aligned perfectly or as best as you can. 
So now I'm going to glue down a part which is close to my eye. Uh, when I glue down a prosthetic which is close to my eye, I always want to take extra time with this. And when you do this on a model, please make sure that they close their eyes until you have powdered the section where you applied glue. Otherwise, their eye may stick to the prosthetic and be all nasty. Trust me, I've had it once. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on making the edges as thin as possible. I'm actually using Telesis 7 again. And since this is a foam latex piece, you can actually use the Telesis or Prosade, whatever you're gonna use, and apply it on top of the edges. Because it's foam latex, it seeps right through. Now I'm gonna move on to the rest of the prosthetic. As you can see, I switched to using a Q-tip. Um, I find this very handy when I want to apply uh, prosthetic adhesive to a larger area. So it's kind of the same idea as the FX brush I used before, but then a Q-tip. So um, yeah, you know, uh, I already explained how I uh, apply adhesive to my skin. Um, but again, I want to show you guys that when you're gonna glue it down, make sure that everything is aligned. I cannot stress about this enough because it can ruin the illusion of the prosthetic. Now I'm gonna move over to the mouth area and glue that part down. The mouth area is a very stressful place for the prosthetic because it moves around a lot, but um, I find that with Telesis 7, I had no problem with moving my mouth. It felt really secure. I just wanted to point that out for you guys. And while I'm gluing down the rest of my prosthetic, which you already know how to do, uh, I want to talk about the fact that this is my first time using a foam latex prosthetic. And this is also my first time using uh, Telesis. I've only ever used um, gelatin prosthetic and uh, the prosthetic adhesive that comes with it from a certain company. Um, it was fine, it was perfect for the quality of the prosthetic, but you got to keep in mind that this is a movie grade or movie quality prosthetic. So yeah, it, it totally changed my way uh, of uh, application, trust me. So what I'm doing now is the same principle as I did on my forehead. I used Telesis to uh, glue down the edges and make them smooth and almost disappear into my skin. <laughs> Just to continue my little story for a little bit, um, yeah, this is definitely a movie grade prosthetic, therefore it is a lot more pricey, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. It just made my application so much easier and so much more realistic. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that I got to try these out and I will make another video with another prosthetic soon, but that's for in the future. <laughs> Which I forgot to film is the part where I glue on my chin piece, but it's really easy. It's the same idea as uh, the face prosthetic I applied for you guys in this video. Now to move on, I'm going to use a white setting powder from MAC and I'm applying that all over my edges just to set everything and make sure that nothing is going to stick to them. Also on my eye area, I'm going to set that as well, uh, just so I can move my eyes freely without them sticking to the prosthetic. And you know, don't be scared. Just check the areas with your finger. If it feels sticky, then you got to apply a little bit more powder on top of it. So now I have set the prosthetic and as you can see, I can move my face freely. So let's get on with coloring. Okay, so now I'm gonna use Mold Green Pax Paint from Melt Products. Pax Paint basically is a combination of an adhesive and makeup, so um, paint. And um, I use this to seal the foam latex piece. You have to seal a foam latex piece with either Pax Paint or something else, otherwise you cannot use, for example, an alcohol activated makeup palette or something like it because it won't stick to the prosthetic. So you have to seal a foam latex piece. And what I'm doing is applying this color all over my face, so including my own skin. Uh, I do, however, have to say that Pax Paint can be really tricky to get off uh, your own skin. 
You know, it's perfectly fine to use on your skin or on your prosthetic, but PAX Paint can be tricky to take off of your skin. Therefore, if you're new to special effects makeup in general, uh, use PAX Paint only on the prosthetic. Just a little tip. And then either use a cream color or a alcohol activated makeup color that matches the color you used on your prosthetic on the rest of your skin. Now I'm using a Delium Tools brush to fill in the areas that I could not reach with the sponge. Uh, the sponge, by the way, was just uh, a simple makeup sponge from Diamond FX. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just filling in all of the little cracks and crevices of the prosthetic with that PAX paint. Because I'm using this as a base color for the rest of my makeup. For the next color, I'm going to use another PAX paint from Mel Products. This one is called Bruise Yellow and with a uh, makeup sponge from Diamond FX, I'm applying that on top of the previous color. And I'm just making a pattern, a random pattern, uh, on top of that, uh, yeah, prosthetic. It's really difficult for me to explain, so I would suggest, like, looking up uh, pictures of orcs, you know, from Lord of the Rings, or Hobbit, what have you, but just like actual skin, uh, it never is one color. So I'm basically layering different colors on top of each other. That's the easiest way I can explain it. Next, I'm gonna use a color from my European Body Art uh, Alcohol Activated Makeup Palette. The color that I'm gonna use is called Aged Blood. You're gonna need 99% isopropanol alcohol to activate these types of colors. And I'm gonna apply that color with another effects brush from Delium Tools designed by Thomas Supernant. And then with that color and brush, I am applying that in a random pattern on my face. So I'm just stippling it on my face just to create some more texture and definition. Like I said before, skin is never made up out of one solid color. It always has layers of different colors in it. And the same goes for my Orc Beggar Lady. So um, yeah, I'm also applying that um, in some of the lines of the prosthetic just to create some more uh, definition again, you know, just to define the lines of the prosthetic some more. Um, for some areas, I will use a little less alcohol on the color just to um, make that color I applied a little stronger. So the less alcohol you use, the more opaque the color will be. And the more alcohol you you will use, uh, the less opaque the color will be. You get the idea. You know, the layering of the colors and, and making imperfections basically is to create realism. Next, I'm gonna use nicotine stain and that aged blood tone together from the European Body Art Palette and another effects brush from Delium Tools designed by Thomas Supernant. This is a, a spatter brush. And I mix those colors together with 99% alcohol and I'm using that to splatter texture or spatter <laughs> texture all around my face. This will give me more dimension and realism. It's all about texture in this makeup look. Next, I'm gonna use Vein Blood and Dirty Brown of that same European Body Art palette. And I will be applying that with a angled FX brush, again from Delium Tools designed by Thomas Supernant. And what I'm gonna do is just define some areas of the prosthetic, so do a little detail work, if you will. I will also be using this color to um, yeah, define some of the lines in the prosthetic, just to make them stand out more, as you can see right here. And when I apply too much of that color, I will use my ring finger to blend it out evenly. Now I'm going back in with a uh, nicotine stain on that spatter brush and just spatter that around my face. With these types of looks, you always have to go back and forth with your colors. Now I'm gonna use a Kryolan rainbow circle and this one is called Black Eyes. And I will be applying that pink kind of red mix shade with my ring finger on my eye. Uh, I just like to use these types of paint wheels uh, just because it doesn't irritate my eyes as much. And I also want to use this as a base for another color I'm going to apply up top. So now I'm applying that H blood tone from the European Body Art palette I used before. 
and I'm just roughly applying that onto my eye and then blending it out with my ring finger. Just to give my eye a little bit more dimension and make it match the rest of my face more. And I'm also just going back in with that color to shade the prosthetic a little bit more. It's just going back and forth with your colors, um, you know, layering. It's, it's a layering process. <laughs> so it can take a very long time before it gets the way you want it to. And if your ears are going to be seen, definitely do not forget to paint those. Um, yeah, you know, and after this, I went back in with nicotine stain again, just to give my skin some more texture. I went back in with dirty brown to redefine the lines. Sorry, you guys, that I forgot to film that. Here's the end result after all of the blending and, and spattering <laughs> and going back in with the colors. Uh, I had so much fun filming this. I love doing special effects makeup, if you didn't know that by now. Oh, look at those teeth. Those are from Famp Fangs, by the way. These are uh, veneers. And yeah, you guys, I had so much fun. And obviously, until the next video. Bye. Happy Halloween.